A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I make well-being and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let justice descend, O heavens, like dew from above. Like gentle rain, let the skies drop it down. Let the earth open up and salvation bud forth. Let justice also spring up. I, the Lord, have created this. For thus says the Lord, the creator of the heavens, who is God, the designer and maker of the earth, who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Who announced this from the beginning, and foretold it from of old? Was it not I, the Lord, besides whom there is no other God. There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unalterable word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear saying, Only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who vent their anger against him. In the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. Kindness and truth shall meet, Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? When the men came to the Lord, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask you, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? At that time, Jesus cured many of their diseases, sufferings, and evil spirits. He also granted sight to many who were blind. And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is reaffirming here the faith of those who are awaiting him. I am the one, look at what I am doing. The prophecies are being fulfilled, then shall the eyes of the blind be opened. The dead are being raised, I am saving you. And the good news that is proclaimed to the poor, that is, all the lowly, all those who know they are dependent ultimately only on God, the good news proclaimed to them is that of eternal salvation and freedom and life with God in the life to come. 
a life we take possession of now, even now, as we are still making the earthly journey. Jesus is saying, I am the Savior proclaimed by those angels to those shepherds on Christmas night. I bring you great news of tremendous joy. Today a Savior is born for you, Christ the Lord. Notice that that Christmas announcement is not just that the Messiah of the Lord has been born. Prophets foretold that God would send His Messiah. God sent many people throughout salvation history on special missions. He anointed them with strength to carry out that mission. And the word anointed is, is what Messiah means, and in Greek, Christ. But this is the Christ, the one anointed above all for the greatest mission of all, and so it's fulfilled in a surpassingly marvelous way because God doesn't just send a Messiah. He comes himself. The angels say to the shepherds, not born this day in the city of David is the Messiah of the Lord. They said he is Messiah and Lord. The Lord came himself. This is too important a mission. This mission of revealing the Father's love, of bringing salvation to His people, of overcoming the ancient curse of sin and death, of reconciling the gap between God and humanity. Too big a mission, too important a task to send someone else. God comes Himself, thus fulfilling what we heard in the first reading. And it is a promise, it is a declaration found at certain key points of salvation history, saying to us, yes, this God not only created us, not only loves us, it's not just that He's there, it's not just that He's all-powerful, He saves us. I am the Lord, not just here for you to adore, worship, welcome, look at, here to intervene on your behalf to set you free. He says to those disciples of John, Look, the dead are raised. I'm giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf. I'm saving. So Isaiah says, I am the Lord. There is no other. There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me, all you ends of the earth, and be saved. Now, when else did he speak this way? In another context of salvation, he said, I am the Lord. In other words, this declaration that the angels make on Christmas, He is Messiah and Lord, is a declaration of salvation and like God made when He revealed His name to Moses. In the book of Exodus, in the third chapter, the burning bush, God says to Moses, I am. This is when he reveals his name. That's what Yahweh means. I am the Lord. I am. So I am. I am what? Well, it was the context of God telling Moses, go and set my people free. God was preparing and sending Moses on a mission of salvation. So here in Isaiah, it's not just I am the Lord, look at me. It's I am the Lord acting on your behalf setting you free from your enemies. And then there's a third instance in John chapter 8. You read the dialogue there that Jesus was having with the Jews, more like a, an argument. And he said, You will die in your sins unless you believe in me, but the one who believes in me will never see death. And they're just like amazed at this. They're saying, Who is this guy saying that he is? And he told them, Before Abraham came to be, I am. I am the Lord. Born for you is Messiah and Lord. And all of it in the context of I am for you. He sets us free. It doesn't matter what is weighing us down. He sets us free. 
Let's take hold of his hand. You know, those that have the merriest of Christmases are the ones most deeply aware that they need a Savior. So many people say, well, what God, Jesus is a Savior, but what is he saving me from? They don't even know. Blessed are we who know how sinful we are. Blessed are we who know how enslaved we are without the Savior. Enslaved to sin, to despair, to death, to blindness, and darkness, and falsehood. But we are set free. A Savior has been born for us. So we rejoice with exceeding joy all the more as we are aware of our need for the Savior. Let's rejoice as we approach that birth, that proclamation. Born for us is a Savior who is the Lord. Amen.